Today, and I had no idea, we don't only talk about corporate greed, but also a fun loadout on a Monte car. Additionally, I am running out of ammunition, but also I'm going with my last shell to decap the base. Can I get a fade in? Let's see. Now, one of you mad lads suggested to me that I try Manticore with binos, and I've decided to give it a go because Wargaming is making World of Tanks a little hard to be treated seriously lately, and I'll touch upon those subjects a little later in the video, but for now, the reason why I'm trying uh, to make this game a little bit more fun is because this game is becoming something uh, different from uh, what I would like it to become and I'm just trying to keep this game alive uh, for me so I think normally if it was a different game if I, if I didn't have this many thousands of hours in it I'd just quit and I'll get to my points later uh, but for now I'm still trying to keep this game interesting to me so I'm making up those uh, funny builds that are not uh, competitive but uh, they lead to some hilarious situations here so video that you can, you can see behind me right now is going to be 13 minutes long and this is going to be Manticore played with patience and to the very last shell. So this is the one key takeaway that I'm going to give you. I'm not going to tell you if it's a win or not because it's going to be quite tricky. See, World of Tanks and not being a serious game you see there's 15 players on each side and the 15 versus 15 aspect in theory makes this game a team based game but it is everything but what i mean by that is in the team of 15 people let's say green team right there's 15 players out of those those are my just averages that i um, let's say take it out of my own butt out of the 15 players we see on the green team, one player is going to be good and that person is going to care. The second one person is going to be good, but he's not going to care in this battle. Uh, this is going to be me because I don't have a competitive setup on my Monte Carlo. Then you have three players that are okay and they are still on the learning path and the rest of the players are, are either not good enough that they're carrying matters or they are just not giving at all. That is uh, my humble opinion. And then you have the red team or blue team for those colorblind, which is going to have a very similar layout, but they might have an additional one uh, that you are missing in your current game. So let's say two people that usually are good might actually be on the enemy team and instead of on your team. So this is the final situation. By the way, binos uh, at their best right now. I couldn't see the Forge B until my binos clicked. Only then uh, he became visible. By the way, we'll see more of that Forge uh, later on. Uh, take a note that we have 15 shells left and as you can see I'm not shooting because that <laughs> Fosh is looking right at me so as soon as I click I'm going to get clicked back when they there goes an FV an easier shot so I do pull my trigger and Fosh B shoots at the TVP instead but this is the battle in the background the topic for today is uh, slightly different because this game is going to be almost impossible to comment he can no longer see me, but he is still shooting. I, I admire that. But the battle in the background is uh, not the main topic of today. The topic of today is the amount of content Wargaming is giving us versus the amount of money Wargaming is expecting us to spend. Now, I know this topic uh, really puts away a lot of people. So if you don't like that kind of talk, uh, just turn the volume down and enjoy the gameplay behind me because the game is really good and worth watching. Uh, but the the concern I have is the amount of uh, money Wargaming is trying to squeeze out of the player base is not on par with the amount of content Wargaming is providing. This is my biggest issue with the game. We have not seen a single good map add-on in years. Honestly, it's, it's dreadful. The situation in World of Tanks is honestly so bad 
I had to ramp down the amount of videos uh, I make because I almost feel like a fraud and honestly I don't know how streamers and you know main YouTube personas um, can live with themselves providing all that content for all, every single microtransaction loot box every single uh, let's say collaboration uh, that we see like now with the girls and panzer this like it's almost like they are turning a blind eye to the fact that we are not getting any meaningful content yet we get another sale everybody seems to be happy uh, with that i am really not and i feel like i don't want to misrepresent um, the game so i'm trying to show world of tanks as a fun game that has uh, good potential uh, for fun uh, but more and more so I, I'm, I'm i'm getting those feelings that i am sometimes misleading people so th consider this my disclaimer world of tanks can be a great game and I still love it. This is my favorite world uh, online uh, game. Uh, but it is my favorite uh, online game mostly because Battlefield is no longer Battlefield. Call of Duty is full of cheaters. Escape from Tarkov is full of cheaters as well and also has a greedy developer. Like the online gaming industry is dead to me. And World of Tanks, even though it's a game full of uh, cheats as well, uh, because of the funny uh, tactical nature and the RNG in World of Tanks, those aimbots, they don't matter that much, because I can still uh, win uh, against an aimbot uh, using player because of my positioning and the uh, RNG being in the game, so I digress. What I mean is, World of Tanks is my pretty much the last uh, online game that I will be uh, playing before I inevitably switch to uh, offline games only and uh, maybe turn even this channel into um, a wider um, nice a wider uh, spectrum, but that's a topic for a different video. For now, let's talk about why are we not getting things we deserve as a player base. Imagine this, when, do you remember the campaigns the, for the Object 280 and 279E? Those two campaigns were the most fun I ever had in World of Tanks. And imagine from a developer's perspective how easy it is to implement at another campaign. Ridiculously easy, honestly. It takes nearly no effort to create three vehicles to give away to players for us, uh, winning in a specific set of missions. That, that will last, one single, single campaign would keep me occupied for a year. And I'll be not complaining for a whole year. Do we get that? No. No, we don't get that. The only things we get is things that benefit the, uh, the company. Which I really don't get because wouldn't it be better to create uh, content that brings more players in? I just don't get that. Really, I just don't get it. L eight shows left, by the way. Uh, that RT is going to be a bit of a problem later on, uh, but I digress again. Uh, yeah, the World of Tanks, very, very uh, unhappy with the way. Like, take a look at uh, the amount of uh, things we've been offered to buy uh, just this year alone. It is ridiculous how many times Wargaming is asking us to open our, our world, and I know they're not expecting everyone to open their world every time again, that's not the point. The point is they are not balancing uh, the amount of uh, content with the amount of uh, purchases. This is my biggest problem. The game has not achieved, uh, has not achieved, the game has not received any love whatsoever. Uh, it's almost like they fully embraced uh, the Asian uh, MMO style monetization and they are not even interested in making the game good anymore. Balancing used to be my uh, big issue. It is not so much these days because I just stopped caring. Uh, but to be honest, anything would be nice. Anything, honestly. The introduction of Polish TDs is barely an add-on. How long did it take him take it? Oh, also, and power creep. Oh my. Do you... Don't you see, I think you do, tell me in the comments if you see it the same way I do. 
the, the situation we have with the power creep has always been a problem, but it is insane. Now, three shells left. This is not looking good because at some point I'm going to have to stop firing and uh, start hoping that my team maybe finally does something like the platoon number two that uh, has been patiently uh, driving around. I'm, I keep missing the weak spots and now I'm spotted, so I'm going to have to shoot probably one more shell and then I'll keep the last one uh, just for emergency because I have lost games in the Manticore. Um, I have lost in games in the Manticore uh, because I was uh, too trigger happy. So I put that shell into the Forge B. He is now down to a one shot, but I'm going to hold that one last shell until the end of the game because I no longer trust my team to do their job. We have three heavies driving together, uh, hunting a single medium instead of uh, trying to win the game. It's almost like nobody's really thinking. But I digress again. My point is, there is an insane level of power creep. Polish TDs, tier 7 is a tier 8, tier 8 is a tier 9, tier 9 could easily be a tier 10 with more hit points, and tier 10 is just ridiculous. And it's like that with every single release. It, I think it started with the Object 430U uh, when they were, when they made, made those uh, changes. They made everything a tier up. So they made tier 10, tier 9. Now this tier, uh, when they, they release a tier 8 uh, premium tank, it's a tier 9 vehicle, really. It's, it's not been a great experience lately, and I'm really divided and uh, not sure where to take uh, my channel because of that, because I feel like I'm misrepresenting uh, the game that we play, but World of Tanks has uh, its moments, and this battle that I'm showcasing you today is one of those moments. This that was that's recorded last year, I think, before I got the second mark on the Manticore. Uh, but it it's difficult for me. Um, the only reason why I'm because it today you were supposed to see a different video, which I already have uh, scheduled. I've, I've pushed that back uh, because I wanted you to see uh, this one. I didn't want to make this video, but I saw two of the most uh, well-known YouTubers uh, release their videos uh, being uh, also happy about the girls in Panzer and it just made me feel really sour uh, that people that I used to look up to uh, are releasing a continuous flow of content about what Wargaming is selling you today and you know what, I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not even going to tell you if you should or shouldn't buy um, what you want because it, the, the, the decision is uh, entirely yours. Uh, I'm just not happy with it myself and honestly, I'm closing my wallet to Wargaming. I have uh, 700 days of premium left and I'm just not interested uh, in participation uh, anymore. I saw the artillery tracer shell, so I know where, is he, where he is exactly, so that is the game for today. 4,600 damage, last shot for the fadings, but he is looking at me, so I pull the trigger quickly, and that is him. Gone. Got the fadings medal with nearly 5,000 damage. A hey, stanker, lovely Manticore game. Uh, guys, if you want to uh, chat in the uh, comments below, please do. Uh, I read and respond to everything. I'm really curious about your position in all of this. And uh, why not talk about uh, fun builds like this? Because World of Tanks is not a competitive game, uh, at least I don't feel competitive anymore, uh, even though I'm still in the top 1%, uh, I just don't feel like competing anymore, uh, really. Uh, so I'm making those funny builds. Right now I'm playing all my Delight Tanks with Binos, because it's fun. <laughs> Tell me in the comments, let's have a conversation. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you did like this one, you'll probably like one of these two as well. And if you've already seen them all, well, stay tuned for the next one. In the meantime, I'll see you on the battlefield.